Hey guys, Bob here, and we are painting pirates. Going into this illustration, um, unlike most of my things that I draw, I actually had a pretty good idea of what I wanted. Um, sometimes I'll take time and write down a character that um, I want to paint. So I'll actually like write things down, like a harpoon, rum bottle, kraken things like that before I even go and sit down and draw. So I was already sitting outside writing all this stuff, having a cup of coffee. I'm like, all right, I think I have an idea what I want. So then I came back in and got started. I knew since I did know I already wanted the harpoon and the rum bottle and all that stuff. I did. I just, what I need to figure out was the pose and <laughs> Here we are, me drawing a, a little bit of a Cat Morgan pose, one leg up, one leg down, but it kind of gives it like a, a power feel. And in this stage, um, like some of my other videos, the I, I normally just keep things pretty loose. I'm not really focusing too much on like really strict anatomy or anything. I'm trying to get um, the general feel and the angle that I want to draw the illustration at. So right now I knew... I wanted to make her seem kind of powerful and so I'm trying to get the angle of us looking up at her and I do this in a lot of my illustrations actually I um, I draw it from a lower angle as we look up I feel it gives the character uh, makes them feel a little bit more heroic makes them feel a little bit stronger it allows to give that um, kind of like the how do I want to say it kind of a beauty shot of the character and so, and that's really what I want. I want it to feel powerful. So as I kind of scribble out what I wanted for the illustration, started getting it all together. Now I'm working on a little bit of the uh, clothing. Normally I take a few takes, at, uh, take a few tries at it. I'm never really sure. I just kind of like start scribbling stuff around. Like, does this look cool here? Does that look cool there? Um, and then sometimes I take things off. I know that if she's out hunting krakens i want her to feel like i don't know maybe she's like the shark of the sea or something <laughs> start putting some like little shark motifs on her and um try to try to build that more of like she's not just sailing the sea she's kind of like this warrior type of character too so as I scribble around, this is normally how my idea process goes. Sometimes I'll write things down and then I go in and I just start scribbling. And sometimes it works out. <laughs> sometimes it doesn't at all. Sometimes like, I don't know what I drew and I just scrap the whole thing and start over. So luckily this time that wasn't the case. <laughs> so but I'm still not really at this point. We're about see we're about three minutes in and I did speed the video up the video has sped up quite a bit so we're we're a little ways in maybe like I don't know 15 minutes in real time and um, I still haven't really gone hard on getting the line work or anything still scribbling I feel like that's kind of important to stay loose at the beginning stages of the painting I find for me at least if I if I get start tightening up right away if I start getting a little bit too tight on the things that I'm drawing and worrying about stuff the creativity just stops the ideas just stop in their tracks and it's hard to it's hard to be creative past that point it's almost like there's two brains that you need to use <laughs> when working on an illustration one of them's the creative side and then the other is this technical side and they kind of like fight with each other sometimes. At least for me, they do. If I'm trying to be super creative, it's hard to be super technical. If I'm worried about being technical, it's hard to get creative. It's kind of a weird thing that happens. Maybe it happens with other people. I'm not really sure. And so at this point, I decided I liked where the illustration was going. And now I was going to, or I'm going in and um, doing some line weight stuff. And 
if you've seen some of my other ones, I do this pretty much on every illustration. I always do the rough draft and now I go in and I start focusing more on like, all right, where's the line weight? Are these things angled right? And technically I don't actually need to do this part to do the full painting, but I think it definitely helps, at least for me. It gives me a lot of leeway when it comes to like doing lighting and other stuff like that, because if I already know where the forms and stuff are, I can concentrate more on the colors and getting those right instead of noodling around and try and get the forms right, if that makes sense. So while it seems like an extra step, this part actually is pretty important and it does take a little bit more time, but, and especially since I don't know, I draw on a Wacom, so it's hard to get my lines to look real great. <laughs> Some people are great at it, but I still struggle with it a bit, and I've been doing it for years. So when it comes to line weight, um, this isn't a hard and fast rule, but this is just what I like to do, is um, things that are usually facing the ground, I give a little bit more of a darker line, or maybe even a thicker line, and I tried to use a lot of um, triangles, I guess, to my advantage to show form. So like if you see where the cloth kind of drops down, I kind of tried to use uh, a little bit of line weight to show where that shadow is. And then it also helps separate that uh, cloth from the character and gives more depth. And it's nice to have stuff like that because things like that do carry over into the painting. And so that's another thing that we don't have to spend a ton of time on and it already gets the point across right off the bat in a simple but effective way. And that's really what we all want with our illustrations is to find like simple ways to solve the problems to make things look good. Um, there's many times I do an illustration where <laughs> I don't do the I don't do the legwork at the start. So that at the end, I end up just trying to render my way out of the hole that I put myself in. Maybe some of you have done that before. Um, maybe some are still doing it now. <laughs> I still get stuck like that once in a while. And if you find yourself having to render your way out of a bad drawing, ugh, it's, it's never fun. It always feels pretty bad. Um, you'll see me flip it back and forth quite a bit um, and that's just mainly to check to make sure that things don't look really off as soon as I as soon as I flip it and um, sometimes it shows like the face <laughs> the face is lopsided god I don't know how many times it's happened to me I'm like oh wow <laughs> why did I draw the eye up by the ear what happened but sometimes you just don't notice it when you're um, just drawing it until you flip it. Um, a lot of the old masters like used mirrors and stuff. They'd like put it behind them so they like draw and then turn around and look I'm like, oh, okay, <laughs> that looks weird. And then they had to fix it. Um, so this it's great that we got Photoshop. We don't have to do that. We can just click a button and get it. Um, this drawing for me was actually somewhat um, of a risk, I guess. Not really a risk. It's never a risk to take a drawing, but like I, this is something I wasn't comfortable with. I've drawn a lot of um, characters in my life, but I haven't drawn <laughs> a lot of krakens or like slimy type creatures or anything like that. This might actually be the first time I've ever done that. So I decided, hey, why not record it and show people <laughs> what could go wrong? <laughs> So, as you can see, I'm still kind of noodling around trying to figure out how I want the hair to go and stuff. And um, now I'm just uh, blocking in some colors to try and get the silhouette. So to see if the silhouette works right away. And then I normally go into laying in some rough values. And typically, so 
I, you don't see it here, but I'll actually, a lot of times I'll get the silhouette and then make it small and see if it reads. And so if it does, then it's like the green light to go ahead for the rest of the painting. If it reads at a pretty small size, decently well, then you're probably got a decently strong composition. Now that doesn't mean it's gonna 100% turn out, but there are checkpoints you can do in an illustration to help secure success. <laughs> to help secure your victory in the end. <laughs> um, and I'll tell you about that in a second. But here, I'm, I'm actually just splashing colors. I had an idea of doing like a sunset, but a lot of people do sunset from behind. I want to do, I want to try something where the sunset is coming from the front. So it's hitting your um, up high and then it's kind of half shadowing down. So everything up high would be kind of warmer and everything down below would be cooler. So that was my mindset. Um, and with that, trying to paint some of those reds or some of those warms into the clouds and trying to further um, solidify that sort of lighting scenario. Now, I've never done this lighting scenario before. This also was kind of a, was kind of a test. But once again, why not record your failures too? If I did fail at this, I would have <laughs> showed everyone anyway. <laughs> But when I was talking earlier about <clears throat> there's checkpoints in a painting that you can use and if you find yourself painting and you get to a point and it just doesn't, you get to the end of it and you're trying to figure out how to finish it, you might have got a little bit off track or at least this is from my experience. Um, it's best to uh, do the complete drawing, make it look good do a silhouette, make sure the silhouette looks good, maybe even without the drawing. And then from there, break down different pieces into different values once those look good. Then you can move on and start working in colors. And if you hit those checkpoints, there's a real good chance that your painting is gonna look all right. Um, a lot, most paintings are actually, and most, yeah, most illustrations <clears throat> that don't seem to turn out or look wonky it's not necessarily someone's rendering skills or something like that. It's usually actually just something that happened fundamentally at the beginning of the painting. <clears throat> and I know it's kind of a struggle because if you're starting out and your drawings aren't super great, like, um, and it does take a long time to build up that drawing skill for sure, um, you're gonna you're gonna definitely struggle so it's just something you gotta work through we all do um, I still <laughs> I still draw um, or paint some turds here and there <laughs> and even in the end this one didn't turn out the way that I exactly wanted it to but it was still an experiment really and so I was happy in the end <clears throat> so here I'm still trying to solidify that lighting you can see that the top is still really blasted out I knew that I wanted to try and make her like blonde, kind of tan, um, you know, like someone who lives on the ocean. <laughs> um, I painted in just, I'm, I, I'm just trying to stay within my value ranges for everything. So like, I'm not deviating too much from the original um, color palettes and values that I put down. So, and sometimes that's, a little bit tricky because it's really easy to go crazy with your values and get off track and then end up with a painting that looks a little bit muddled or looks like um, you didn't have a lighting scenario and that that can definitely happen in the rendering stage <laughs> you can definitely take something that you hit all the check marks with and then ruin it by <laughs> screwing up your values by not like realizing it and that happens. Everyone does it once in a while. <laughs> so my lighting process usually is, um, so if, if it's getting hit by the sun, it's going to be warmer as it gets, as the object rotates closer to us. And if it's not getting hit by the sun, for example, like the little shark metal on the knee, when as it rotates towards us, it's going to start reflecting upward some of the cooler colors. And so that's kind of how I feel. That's in my brain, I got that, um, that formula as I paint the whole picture. If it's not getting hit by the sun, then the planes facing upward are gonna get some of that skylight. 
if it is getting hit, it's going to get the warmer tones. And you can see here, I'm now finally actually getting to trying to paint the Kraken. <clears throat> and as I said before, I haven't painted a lot of beasts in my life. Um, I typically get hired to paint characters or people's characters. And when I do paint for myself, I typically just paint characters doing something. And very rarely do I do like a beast. And I would like to be able to do cool beasts and things, but I guess the way to start doing it is to just start doing it. So here I'm kind of going back and forth trying to figure out how did I want these tentacles to look? Something looked off. I didn't know if I want to put these glowy rings on there or not. I think part of it kind of looks cool. Maybe it could have been like a compliment color going in, like the blue from the sky and stuff. And of course, I had to draw on a ship because, you know, pirates. <laughs> um, I suppose now would be a good time to point out that I definitely use a reference. Um, not the exact pose of the character. And in fact, some, I got photos right now of me holding a bottle and holding, a, like I had a broom. <laughs> I was holding a broom and a bottle and took a photo of myself in this kind of pose. It looks really weird. I'm not going to show anyone. <laughs> I guess maybe I could. But uh, I did that. So I used that for my... Uh, for my reference and then I look at a lot of beach photos to see how light works um, when it's sun setting like that and then I also have um, I was looking at a lot of squid photos and octopus and other things to try and get in the mindset because sometimes we can think we know what something looks like until until you try and draw it and you're like oh wait a minute I don't think I actually do know what that looks like <laughs> So, like, a good example of that is if you if you're starting out and someone's like, "Hey, why don't you why don't you draw a dog or like a horse?" and we all think we know what they look like, and so you start drawing it, and a lot of us find out like pretty quickly, like, "Oh crap, <laughs> what does a horse actually look like?" And you got like broken legs and stuff. Man, I've drawn a lot of broken horses. <laughs> so. <laughs> Here I'm trying to still figure out what to do with the uh, with the Kraken. You can kind of see me working in blues and stuff. And um, also drawing in the ship. I actually do have also reference for the ship too. Not in this pose, just like what the back of it looks looks like. So I was trying to go for like a Spanish Galleon. I think Spanish Galleons are probably one of the coolest things ever created. They just, I, they're just crazy looking. So ornate. And it's just shocking that people were able to make them and sculpt them the way that they did. Um, so as of right now, I was pretty happy with the colors. I like how warm she is and how cool the other pieces look. But there is still something bothering me about the tentacles. Almost, well, and this has actually happened in this illustration. I kind of drew the tentacles wrong. And I noticed kind of at the end, like, what happened here and so this is one of those things where my drawing wasn't good enough and so now I'm trying to like render and change my way out of it at the end and that's something I typically try my best to avoid because then I'm not focusing so much on how to make the colors really beautiful or trying to find new ways to make bounce like look good here and there now I'm trying to figure out the form while I'm working on the color and for me, that's typically never the best way to do it. Um, it never turns out super great. So something weird kind of happens here at the end too, where I was recording and somehow the file didn't save right and got corrupt. So the last bit of rendering isn't there, but you can see that I'll add in like scrapes and stuff to make it seem like the squid was in a battle or something. Overall, the piece turned out okay. I'm not super happy with it just because um, I feel like I kind of screwed up the squid a bit, but sometimes it happens.
if you made it this far to the end of the video I just want to say thanks for thanks for listening to my mad rambles as I go through the painting process and uh, appreciate it and I'll um, be posting more videos soon